Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, what we're going to be doing is installing these two, uh, their OEM fender flare front, uh, front bumper extensions. So these are what originally comes on the wide body cars. Um, and the ones that came with the kit that I had on mine, they did not fit properly. There was always a gap. Um, I'll throw a picture of it up so you guys can see that. Um, so I cut these holes out. It was my first time ever like using a Dremel to, you know, try to make these flares fit. The way they fit in there, it's very, very precise. If you do it just a little bit off, then it will, you know, not sit right. So what I was running into at first was, oh, okay, it was sitting too far forward. So it wasn't being flush into here because it has this lip on the back side of it that makes it sit into this lip that is right in here. Um, and then there's also a lip at the bottom that makes sure that it sits flush within here. I know the car is dirty. I got a whole lot going on. Don't worry about that. But um, I cut these holes a little too big. I wasn't worried about it because I'm plastic welding um, to fill the holes. It doesn't really matter that much because it's plastic um, and it's unpainted right now. But I'm probably not going to be running this bumper, but I don't want to keep on driving around without the stuff on there looking kind of funky. Um, the other thing that's going to be replaced is the actual side skirts. So I'm trying to find OEM ones that will make it look fine. Besides that, you can't really tell that this is an aftermarket kit. Um, and a lot of people know that. That's why they always ask me about the fitment on it, um, I, which I will be going over a whole video for. I'm just trying to get other stuff squared away before I end up trying to tell everybody how to do this and i'm not trying to jump on a whole bunch of stuff just trying to knock out the little things so i'm gonna be i got another dremel this time and at first i was using the blade you don't really want to use the blade this is the dremel i have but it runs into like a little etching kind of extension and there's a drill bit on the end of it I'm gonna mark my uh, spots with some sharpie and get to cutting Check the fit. Just like that. I just gotta rivet it in from the back side where there's already uh, parts for it to be riveted at. So just gotta rivet it in and then it'll close up all the gaps. You can see I'm just gonna plastic weld all this up in here before I end up priming the bumper. And all I need to do is find another replacement piece I'll find another uh, side marker light and we'll be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and river it in this side and then figure out some way to secure the uh, front so that it don't end up flinging out. Okay, and this side is fresh, so you'll see exactly how I do it. So put it in here, line up the back side. into the loop. I know that these these aren't gonna go, as soon as you put it on there, that's not exactly how it's gonna go. They're gonna bend in. So whenever I make my marks, I'll make a mark at the top of, I'll make a mark at the top of the uh, insert and at the bottom, and then make my uh, cut a little bit bigger than that. And then same thing on all the rest of them, so. Make my mark a little bit further back in here. Make another mark a little bit further back in here. Same thing goes for here. Make a mark way back here. Another mark way back here. One. It's two. That's five. So now that I got all my marks, just 
just double check, put it on there flat so I'll know how it's supposed to go with the body line. Wrap it around it. So you gotta make it a little bit bigger because they're gonna expand when they slide in. They don't keep the same width the entire way. Alright, so these are all the cuts I made. Pray that it fits on the first go around. Let's put it on and see. So on the back side here on the top one, there is a piece of the bumper support that is actually blocking it from going all the way in. The bottom, as you can see, it's in there pretty nice, but uh, gotta make some more cuts. Yes, it slides all the way in. Snaps in. Almost there. Oh no, nope. you got it. She is in y'all. So now all I need is something to hold the back side of the stuff in place. I don't know if you can see that tiny slit of light shining through, but that's just because it's not riveted in on the back side yet. But yeah, this is, it's in, it's in there, man. This is the style of light that goes in there. It is not a flat light and I'm pretty sure y'all already know that, but yep. Back side slides in. That just presses in. I'll be the one painting and doing the body work on the on the car. I'm gonna try my best to fix all the issues with it and Get it all looking nice. Y'all thought I was playing about the painting stuff, man. This is my Cobalt 80 gallon, two stage, five horsepower air compressor. It's just sitting back here right now because I haven't had the outlet hooked up to use it. I pretty much have everything I need in order to start doing my painting and body work, but I just gotta get this area all kind of, you know, spaced out so I can. So I have the air compressor. I have my Flexzilla hose that's actually 75 foot, so it's overkill. Um, Weld USA two stage, uh, not two stage, it's a multi stage air drying kit. That's my powder coating gun up there. There is some more parts. I got my main gun. I'm gonna grab another one of these, but in the 1.8, this is a 1.4 tip, I believe. No, one point, this is a 1.3 tip actually. I got all my high flow fittings and, and uh, stuff like that. And here I got all my paper cups, 3M quick release PPS kit. And I already got my uh, safety stuff and it's gonna be the cheap priming gun. Okay. There it is. Yeah, it looks good. It looks good. So, all right. Catch you guys on the next video.